Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna react to Vibiza with the video title, I'm ex-Muslim. All right, let's jump into it. I'm sure we're going to hear a very, very good reason on why this person apostatized. But guys, before we do so, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Well, hello. I guess you clicked on the video um, for the title. And yeah. that's what I'm going to deliver today. I'm going to talk about me being an ex-Muslim and... Yeah, well, the first red flag for an ex-Muslim is, of course, if you cannot pronounce the word Muslim and you call yourself an ex-Muslim. I'm an ex-Muslim and there he goes again. it's not like, you know, a drill and it's not to be provocative or anything. And I'm not talking about me being an ex-Muslim in a way that, you know, I was like once Christian or something else and then I uh, converted to Islam and then I went back. Um, and what I actually mean by being an ex-Muslim um, I mean, me being born a Muslim. He looks like he had plastic surgery and is wearing makeup, so therefore I can't really tell his ethnicity. But if he says that he was born Muslim, not Muslim, I would have to assume that he is either Albanian or maybe Bosnian. Islam in a way. If he's um, speaking the truth, that is. So without going into too much detail, because I, to be honest, don't want to dox myself and I don't want to receive death threats. Um, because I you will on know YouTube, how probably. the Muslim community usually works. Um, and by the way, if you're <laughs> triggered by anything, you may as well just leave right now. Um, because People are so weird. So he's claiming he doesn't want to be provocative. He doesn't want to dox himself. If you have anything negative to say, just leave. Man, if you don't want to have any reactions, don't make a YouTube video. This is not for the faint of heart what I'm about to say and what I'm about to speak on. So if you're triggered and if you're politically correct to the moon and back, you may exit just politically okay, correct. So what does being a Muslim and defending Islam have to do with being politically correct? I'm going to get a heart attack. Um, and if I look okay. a little bit rough, I had some procedures done. So I still like, I'm not fully there. So yeah, there you go. Like, you know, the guy definitely had plastic surgery. Um, I'm ex-Muslim and without like doxing myself and you know like talking about my background Get to the point, man. too much. I am European, 100%. Like ethnic. We can tell. I'm not Arab. I'm not like from the Middle East or anything like that. And neither are my parents or anyone in my entire family history. Like, yeah, like the past, I don't know how many... Hundreds of, year, hundreds of years, uh, no one is from the Middle East. So, the thing is, though... Okay, he's clearly speaking to a liberal, atheistic audience, because if you're Muslim, you of course know that you don't have to be an Arab in order to be Muslim. There are a few European countries, and you can Google that and look it up yourself, where there is a certain Muslim population, which was there since like the dawn of time not really um like like the ottoman empire basically invaded certain countries and then things went downhill or to sh so yeah oh yeah did so, they so now he's complaining that the countries went to shit once the ottoman empire invaded those countries if the ottoman empire hadn't invaded those particular countries those people wouldn't have accepted islam and therefore you would have been a christian and guess what? Then you would make a video. This is why I'm ex-Christian. You're just a liberal atheist. Your opinions on conquering on empires do not count. The thing is, I'm not the only one in my family who's like ex-Muslim. Actually, my sister is also ex-Muslim. She. If I hear Muslim like one me, more she time, like, you know, um, convert to Christianity or anything. We just don't believe in God in general. And I'm going to speak Duh. about why I left Islam. I'm going to speak about yeah, speak about it. Come on, why man. I never actually believed a lot of the things that were said in, in the holy book um, of, of Islam. <laughs> okay, then you're not an ex-Muslim because a Muslim is someone that submits his will to God. However, by your own admission, you just said that you never really believed in the holy book. You never really believed in God. Therefore, you might be an ex-cultural Muslim. You simply left the faith of your parents, but you were never a Muslim. 
also going to speak about like my view on Islam today. And Can't this wait. is not scripted, by the way. This oh, is I didn't notice. Wedding, so you may see Looks so well like organized. topic to topic, but I'll try to stay within the topic of Islam Please for do. Come the on. sake of this video. Okay. So when I was like younger, I actually noticed that um, my parents were pretty secular, um, meaning they That's were really the following the religion that religiously, no pun intended. And... But I kind of still noticed that some traditional aspects of Islam were kind of like um, seeping through. And I also noticed <laughs> that through. my parents, you the know, atheism. had this weird like relationship with religion where it was basically cultural and a part of their identity, uh, even though they weren't that religious. My grandma was... Yeah, that's interesting. That's something that I actually can relate to. Yet again, this guy is European from a Muslim country. We can only assume that he comes from Bosnia or from Albania and hence from the Balkan. I myself come from the Balkan. However, I come from Macedonia and my parents were Orthodox Christians, still are Orthodox Christians. However, just culturally. And that is a phenomenon that I observed on the Balkan. Communism did, of course, its destruction on the Balkans, and therefore people have been secularized, people have been turned into atheists, and since then they simply identified culturally with being a Muslim or being a Christian. However, they do not know enough about their religion. And growing up in such a secularized household, you basically just have two options. Either you look into the religion and you try to understand it yourself and therefore become more religious than your parents, or you become an atheist like the person in the back. As time went by, I kind of like, you know, had an identity crisis back in my teenage days and I started like, you know, becoming more religious only for that to last like about three to four months and then me completely um, leaving religion behind because I just couldn't see why I would need a God in my life to guide me as if someone would, you know, as if I needed someone to tell me <laughs> do this or do that. Or He's already perfect. Because, like, I... Yeah, this is basically what atheism leads to. He doesn't understand why he would need any guidance whatsoever as he was the perfect human being that knows everything. Why need guidance, right? So this is what it boils down to if you are an atheist because you are a moral subjectivist by default. You cannot believe in universal morals even though some atheists will claim that if there is no universal standard. So therefore, in a godless, materialistic universe, you don't have true right and wrong. You don't have truth to begin with. You do not have true and false. You do not have right and wrong. You do not have good and evil. And therefore, the only thing that is left there is, of course, following your own desires. And those desires feel good. And therefore, why would you need any guidance? Yes, to be Amazing. honest, I could just use my brain and my heart um, exactly. in a metaphorical sense. And in a metaphorical? I was able what kind of metaphorical sense? You're an atheist after all, so therefore you literally use your brain. You take your brain as the golden standard, and this is where you derive your morals from, whatever feels good. That's exactly what you just said. But this, of course, brings about a problem. If you take, for example, a serial killer, he is listening to his brain, he is listening to his heart. For him, it feels just right to go out and shoot people. This is what he gets if he listens to his own moral compass. So you see how problematic it is if we subscribe to subjective morals. But in the end, this is how deep the atheist mind goes. Or to mostly live by my own rules which weren't my own rules like of course <laughs> these were okay. societal rules but still they yeah. were pretty much based in like uh yeah you know like a human rights way basically so yeah yeah exactly this is what boils down to a human rights way basically utilitarianism whatever benefits society but who is dictating what is benefiting society if you have a society, I brought this example a billion times just because it is so obvious for most normies, you go back to Nazi Germany and the majority opinion of the people in the society is to get rid of the Jews. So in this day and age, it apparently appeared as common sense and it was the majority opinion. Is it therefore right or wrong? And I kind of, you know, when I was like a teenager reading the Quran, I basically like my experience with it was you know one page being uh, 
all fine and butterflies and uh, God is loving and caring and blah, blah, blah. And the next page was everybody needs to die and you'll be like, you know, drenched in hot oil and baked and I don't know, you know, whatever. So it was like pretty off-putting, to be honest, to actually even believe that that could be a god. So basically what he's saying is that the Quran is talking about consequences for your actions. That there's actually a consequence if you do good or bad in this world. And this is of course a huge problem for an atheist that wants to live by his own rules. Because how can there be a god that makes the decisions what is right, what is wrong, he will judge over me. No, I can't believe that such a god exists. No, actually, you can believe that such a God exists, but you do not want to believe because it would imply that your actions actually have consequences. Any form, you know, to be so brutal and to be so, like, abnormal, acting like, you know, what you is abnormal? All of these humans just to, you know, threaten them every second of their life. You know, if they do this, then this will happen, and this will happen, and this will happen. And I didn't like that at all. <laughs> okay, so you said it yourself that you have pages in the Quran that are beautiful and then you have pages that are threatening to you. So therefore you cannot claim that you're being threatened every second of your existence. Maybe actually you are threatened every second of your existence because you are sinning in some type of way and therefore you feel that those pages are actually addressing you personally. But be that as it may, the Quran itself is a guidance for mankind. It simply warns you of what you shouldn't do to have a better life. So ultimately, if you get the message right away, you don't need to obsess about it. You simply understand what the consequences are. It's exactly like me as a father disciplining my son. If my son listens right away, I only need to discipline him once. If he doesn't listen, I of course need to discipline him a couple of times. He, for example, loves to take a marker and paint on my couch. Of course, I will have to discipline him and tell him that there are consequences to his actions. The mentality of the religion was something very off-putting. And okay. uh, what I also um, didn't like about Islam was uh, that it was a, is sorry, a pretty sexist religion, homophobic religion. It's literally... Okay, really now we're getting to is. the actual um, issue. And I didn't like that at all. I don't think people should be uh, killed because they're gay or people should be killed because they're transsexuals or people should be killed because they're Jews or people should be killed because they don't believe in God or any of that, which I understand there is some nuance when it comes to Islam and I understand that there are... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing because it's always the same story. So for people on the outside, people that haven't really looked into theology, people that haven't really looked into liberalism, etc., this might seem genuine, like some sort of news. Oh, interesting story there. But ultimately, it's always the same. He simply cannot understand that there is right and wrong in this world. And moreover, that right doesn't always feel right and wrong doesn't always feel wrong. A very, very simple example. Many people enjoy junk food. However, we can all agree that junk food is not healthy for you. This would be a practical example of why what feels good is not automatically good for you. This is short-term gratification and in the long run you might get sick, you might get fat, etc., etc., you name it. So people lose that perspective when it comes down to life in general. What if this life is actually a test? It's not only about enjoying pleasure all the time. Go figure. It is about a greater goal. But the atheistic mind cannot accept this idea. The idea of this existence actually being a test. A test of desire. A test of patience. They cannot fathom it. For them, it's a material universe. It just sprung into existence. We're all space monkeys on a spinning ball. And now it's a competition, essentially, about who enjoys life more. And this is where materialism comes into place, of course. You see people buying one sports car after the other, one house, another house, fancy clothes, plastic surgery. They all do that in some sort of pursuit of happiness. And in the end, they're miserable and depressed and they're wondering why. Why? Because this creation is temporary. Even the atheist will agree. You will die. You can't take anything into the grave with you. But somehow they expect this permanent bliss in a temporary existence. It doesn't work that way, man. And therefore all you're saying is, I don't understand. How can it be wrong that a man loves another man or is a transsexual? I don't understand how this can be wrong because it feels good to them.
Yet again, the father-son example. For my son, it feels absolutely fantastic to paint my couch, to eat candy all day. But it is factually wrong. Me as a father, I know better. I need to guide him. This is the principle. This is what it boils down to. This is what the Quran is for us. It is a guidance for mankind so we can distinguish right from wrong. Right from wrong is external to us because we all have desires. I might like something that you hate and you might like something that I hate, but what is right? What is wrong? Well, you know, you can't take that all for granted like it was written at you know, at a certain time, in a certain context. The thing is, there is no context on planet Earth that I would be fine with saying kill this and that and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, no, uh, let's not go there. There is no <laughs> thing as, you know, a context to just like, uh, no. allow killing of people. Okay, great. Period. He says this, living in a Western country, <laughs> which based its existence upon colonization, right? And spreading liberalism to Africa, to Arabia, etc., etc., you name it, right? This is what the West is built upon. Creating a liberal world government where everybody can do what they want, right? And if you don't follow those rules, they bombard you. So don't act as if violence is not part of your ideology. But he's just and a normie, man. He doesn't understand it. Putting to me and I, and I didn't he's just like enjoying that. his desires. And I Everything's fine. We don't kill anybody I here. I didn't want to support that because if I can support something okay. to a certain degree, I stop identifying with it. Like, for instance, I can't say uh, I'm white even though I'm <laughs> what? this color, like, you know, it's just You're the like whitest person I've seen. somewhere, like, you know, the spectrum just like ends. And if you're no, you're white. a certain like degree dark, you're not white anymore. And no, you're white. It, it ended on that. I, I, my family was completely fine with it. Like it was weird for them, but nobody was like threatening me or, you know, trying to kill me or whatever, or yeah, because I they don't believe you. My family, like it's normal, you know, and when when uh, it's Ramadan, which is like the month where Muslims fast, you know, I try to be supportive and talk to them and stuff like that. And if it's, um, oh God, um, I don't know the English term, but you know, like the, the if you're Muslim or have been Muslim or know someone who's Muslim, um, and there's like the um, holiday after Ramadan, which is basically like where you eat a bunch of stuff. Um, I also celebrate that when I'm with my family. Wow, he doesn't and know eat. You know, not that I hate He doesn't know it, Muslims. right? But he's an ex-Muslim. I don't hate Muslims. Yeah. I oh, hate wow. Islam. <laughs> um, we see. All right, that's, that's it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here because it's absolutely pointless to keep on listening to this man, person, whatever spectrum of white into brown. Coming from a Christian background myself, I actually have to remind myself of the saying, hate the sin, not the sinner, because ultimately this guy is just a product of his environment. His parents were secularized already. They didn't care that he apostatized. And moreover, he never understood the message of Islam. Therefore, I can't even say that he is an ex-Muslim. Muslim, not Muslim, but simply a person that was born into the religion somewhat, never really got it because it didn't feel right for him, and then discarded it all because he wanted to follow his desires. He wanted to put the pee-pee in the poo-poo. All right, guys, enough rambling. I'm going to cut it off here. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all, much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajza'i Ah